for those who prefer Linux or are simply curious about Linux and other open source technologies, this is Category 5 Technology TV. Welcome to episode number 279 of Category 5 TV, January 22nd, 2013. How are you? Good to see you. Yeah. How are you doing, Abigail? Good, good. good. Just keeping busy, trying to stay warm. Abigail Smith joining us uh, for a Canadian winter tonight. It is bitter out there. Freezing Snowy. cold. Snowy. Feels like winter. It, it, For one. It certainly does. Yeah, it's, you know, we've had some weird days because it's like super warm. I'm out there late at night filling the hot tub, you know, and, and it's super warm. Just bragging about your yeah. hot tub. Just filling the hot tub, you know, just pouring some water in, just standing there with the hose, you know, whatever. And uh, then all of a sudden it's like 300 below and here we are. 300 we below. Yeah. Well, how you been? Good. Yeah. Just, yeah, working been a long time yeah, since we've seen you. It's been a like. couple months. Yeah. I was thinking about that as I was coming here tonight. I'm like, wow, it feels like I haven't even seen on the show before. <laughs> but it would one time. Through before. So you, you, you let us know at the end of the show uh, if, if it seemed like she had never been on the show before. It's funny though, I was saying before the show, uh, 2012, you were on for one episode because mm -hmm. you're, you're like the newbie. As the far newbie. as co-hosts go, yeah. Uh, and the episode that Abigail was on was our number one episode for 2012. What gives? What I gives? Don't know. It's just, I don't know. Could I, be the co-host. Maybe. Could be. Uh, you know, that was. I was excessively witty that day. I don't know. Could have been the feature. Of course, it was mm. you, Robbie. It was you? It probably was. Although. Yeah. I you could say like if, if no matter what the number one episode is, I was on it. So that's a major <laughs> fail right there, because it's kind of a given. Yeah. So. Well, then. <laughs> it was her. <laughs> she was the only thing that was out of the ordinary. Hey, chat room, Agamotto, TikTok, JP, Troy74, Garby, and all the folks that are joining us on Google+. Plus. In our hangout tonight, as well, on YouTube at youtube.com slash category 5 TV. Nice to see you. Thanks for being here tonight. Abigail. Oh, no. <laughs> I got question distracted. For you. Just a question for you. <laughs> yep. What's coming up in the news? Well, let me tell you. Oh, that <clears throat> tell me. <clears throat> I got my throat. <laughs> coming that, up that's in a the good newsroom. Segue. <laughs> <laughs> as, as I bring it up on the screen, <clears throat> <clears throat> just buy myself some time and... <clears throat> yeah. And go, okay, action. collect it. <clears throat> <laughs> just don't talk about clouds or anything like that. Nothing like that. Mega Uploads, Kim.com, has set up a new <laughs> Oh, no. What's happening? Has set up... I didn't pre-read this, so I didn't even know. No. Has set up... <laughs> it literally is about the cloud. Has set up a new Astounding. cloud storage and file sharing site. Atari US. Kim.com was arrested and all this kerfuffle <laughs> over Mega Upload. Okay. Which is a cloud yeah. sharing yep. network yep. And, and all that. And so they've gone... He's gone and... Uh, and, and done some more cloud-based architecture. Just to see if uh, you get away with it. <laughs> so uh, Atari US has filed for bankruptcy protection. Protection even. Protection. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to go bankrupt. We'll file for bankruptcy projection. <clears throat> A massive... <laughs> I apologize. My news is not collected like last time. <laughs> Wait till we get halfway through. <clears throat> A massive data leak of personal information for half a million Canadians could have been prevented. 
An architect in Holland wants to use 3D printing technology to print crazy buildings. And right. lastly, a dangerous remote zero-day route exploit has been discovered on some Linksys routers. Stick around. <laughs> These stories are coming up later in the show. Interesting. Hey, okay, so people are asking in the chat room, how do I get this show on my Android device? How do I get it on my iPhone? How do I get it on this or that? All you need to do is go to our mobile site. It is m.cat5.tv. Scan that QR code or just go there in your browser, m.cat5.tv. Check it out. That's going to get you there, and you can watch live. You can catch uh, some past episodes as well right through our mobile website. <laughs> what is going on in this side of the studio? I was all making giggles tonight. I was like, why is he like this? Like, is it my turn or something? <laughs> and then I look over and I see that you have the code up on the screen. Ooh. Just... <laughs> <sighs> Abigail, we have really astoundingly basic CGI effects here at Category 5 TV. <laughs> You'll be amazed what you can do with a, a, an AVI file and a little bit of chroma key. It's, it's astounding. <laughs> Sound effects to boot. Oh no! <laughs> what a good and now, start to Abigail. this episode. <laughs> hey, tonight we've got some fun stuff. Abigail and I are going to be talking about creating. We've been talking a little yeah. bit about this uh, on the side, creating our very own photo booth. I'm talking like you know when you go into a mall and you can sit down with your kids in front of a, a little camera and it takes four pictures and then spews them out or whatever. We're going to be looking at how to build one uh, tonight, and we're actually going to be using all uh, Linux-based technology tonight. And that's going to be followed up with uh, with another feature uh, in March as well. Yeah. So, awesome. Very cool stuff. We have a Net Talk Duo Wi-Fi to give away to those of you who were able to get your ballots in at cat5.tv/phone. We've got a whole bunch here. There you go. We have converted your ballots into numbers. Your chances are one in seventy-two. And uh, we're excited to give that away. The NetTalk Duo Wi-Fi is going to give you a free year of long distance and phone service. You can call anywhere in Canada or the U.S. absolutely free. So stick around. We're going to be giving that away to one lucky viewer uh, in just a little bit's time. Elmer Fishpaw. Hey. <laughs> good to see you. DNLS. Good to see you, too. All right. Well, uh, Postcards. Postcards. We, uh, we love to receive your postcards. The postcard wall is filling up fast. Uh, we do have some space for you, and we are willing to buy another cork board if, uh, if necessary. So, <laughs> Abigail, how can they send those in? All right. Well, if you want to send in a postcard, please. Uh, category 5.tv, P.O. Box 29009, Barrie, Ontario, Canada, of course. L4N7W7. And Category 5.TV is a member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. And the International Association of Internet Broadcasters. Broadcasters. Scott L. is wondering, do you really want a postcard from Barrie, Ontario? And I would say yes. We'd love to receive a postcard from wherever you are, even if you're in our hometown. And in fact, that would be quite meaningful because it would be really lame for me to send myself a postcard. Memories of Mr. Bean Christmas Special. But that's what it could come down to. So Scott L., <laughs> please, please send us a postcard from Barrie, Ontario. All right? We appreciate it. And you can send us one from anywhere in the world. Check out where our viewers are located on our viewer location map. It's live, and you can get there by going to map.cat5.tv. Hey, we're going to be right back after this, and Abigail and I are going to be talking to you about how to build a photo booth. Very exciting stuff. And don't forget, we've got that NetTalk Duo Wi-Fi to give away tonight as well, so stick around. At EcoAlkalines, we believe you should be able to trust your batteries not just here, but here, here, and here. But with one exception, you should also be able to trust your batteries here. EcoAlkalines are the world's first and only certified carbon-neutral battery manufactured to the highest standards of recycling and quality, without any trace amounts of harmful chemicals like mercury, lead, or cadmium. EcoAlkalines provide performance that rivals leading national alkaline battery brands at a comparable price. Find out more about the EcoAlkalines difference. EcoAlkalines.com This is Category 5 Technology TV. You will find us online at www.category5.tv. This is professional TV, okay? It's not <laughs> Only if you're watching YouTube do you know what goes on behind the scenes. <laughs> 
<clears throat> or backstage pass. Good to see you too. We've got so many camera angles and stuff that people. Yeah, how how can people? <laughs> you know, but uh, we'll try to pay attention to you up front there. So, Abigail, you and I have been having a talk about creating a photo booth. Mm -hmm. What's the purpose? What's the purpose? Yeah. What could you use a photo booth for? What would you use a photo booth for? A wedding. A wedding wedding for us. A wedding. (laughs) So he's proposed and you said yes. Yes. You've got a reception coming up. Hey, look at that. Yeah, bling bling. I'm blind. (laughs) Careful with these lights. Yeah, so... Yeah, just something Exciting fun stuff. for the guests. Congratulations, by the yeah. way. I guess Thanks. congratulations from the community are in order. And we're going to be building you a photo booth so that at the reception, uh, people can sit down and make funny faces and probably put on a, a silly hat or some, yep. something like that. Get some props. Yeah. So we're going to try to do it on a shoestring and, and do this in such a way that we're not spending too much money because, uh, you know, perhaps you at home want to give it a try and you, you don't want to have to spend you know, a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars like it would cost to, you know, to get one of these professional rigs. Yeah, even just to rent it is easily a thousand. And that's isn't just that, for a basic, isn't that basic. Wild? Yeah. So if you follow along with us tonight and, and in the course of this series, because it is going to be a, a build series uh, to, to put together this photo booth, you will be able to build a system that you could rent out for thousands of dollars. Start your own business. Start your own business. <laughs> so uh, that that's kind of an exciting thought. So that's one thing you could do as well is to rent this thing out. Maybe you could build one that's economical and you could rent it out to people who are looking for a deal. Do it for 400. Would you would you buy it at, or would you rent it at 400? Yeah. That, like I, that that would probably be oh wow, well, only 400. What's yeah, the catch, right? Yeah, exactly. So, lots of congratulations in the chat room. Mhm. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Um so what we're going to look at to start as we look at uh, how this is going to be done, uh, is we're going to start by using open source technologies. We're going to start by looking at Linux and uh, some of the software that's available for Linux. We're going to have to buy a little bit of hardware. That's a given. Um, let's say our budget is, I don't know, say 100 bucks or something. Seems kind of, that's pretty cheap. Eh? Yeah. I think yeah. we could do it for 100 bucks. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Later, That's in, so helpful. <laughs> we mentioned uh, in in March. On March twelfth, we're going to be following up, and then we're gonna we're gonna be increasing our budget a little bit, getting into some more you know high end software, uh, and and actually building a, a bit of a rack. And we're going to talk mm-hmm. talk more about that in a little bit's time. I think what it starts with is is making a decision. What do you want this booth to look like? And we had the talk. We've been looking at some of the options. What are some of the options that we've come across? We've come across um, room dividers. Yeah. That, are you know they're printed double-sided so you can get like a really nice waterfall scene or something along those lines yeah gorgeous yeah. i mean there are really, really awesome really nice. dividers out there do you there. remember what they cost uh that one was a 200 i think 200 or so i think so be... i think if you wanted the six panel versus the four panel it was closer to 300 right and you probably want the wider of the two mm-hmm. i would think because if you've got three or four people trying to get into the shot you'd be looking at uh, a, a wider shot so and that's not bad. I think if you have a budget for it, that would be a good idea. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'm looking at... Uh, now, one of the things that I did find, Abigail, is uh, a backdrop just at a local store. And I'll, I'll show the viewers this. It's 50 bucks, And it's just like... A, I don't know. It's like a... That w- like weave a, a, yeah, material. Yeah, woven or- um, room divider. A rattan wood divi- uh, room divider. I don't know. What do you think of that? I, I'm not sure if it's a little too drab for... A wedding. I think with something like that, you'd almost need a lighter color so yeah. that people don't blend in. Could you spray paint it? I wonder at that price. Maybe get some some trim clad or something and paint well, it. Well, I down guess it white. depends on the quality. Like if that's kind of like a plastic weave, or if like that's a, more a, a cloth. Wood. It's like a wood. A wood. Yeah. Rattan. Kind of idea. Oh, that's uh, certainly the price is right. I think it's it's yeah, about for sure. fifty, 50 bucks. for that. <laughs> yeah. So then the next thought that I had was okay, well. Because we've got to plan this thing out, and you've got to plan out your rig as well and figure out how you're going to do this on a, on a shoestring budget. What if we got... Now, you had shown me some muslin backdrops, mm-hmm. which are yep. typically used for photography and, and uh, studio use, and a muslin backdrop can be had for fifty a hundred dollars um the the bricks behind us are actually muslin you can see how real they look it's a very you know muslin backdrops are are excellent uh but usually what what do you run into you you need to have something to hang them on so you get you can get a muslin for a hundred bucks but then you need to have a good solid stand because they can be very very heavy and the stand could be a hundred or two hundred or three hundred bucks depending on what you need 
uh, and quite large as well because you've yeah. got something that's 10 feet by you know 25 feet kind of thing length so that can be a problem as well so I, I started thinking about that though what if we were to create a, a PVC type stand so taking some pipes that are normally used for you know to run electrical through or something mm -hmm. like that cut it to to size and make our own stand not for muslin but for drapes like yeah. actual drape panels uh, with you know the the grommets within the panel that the PVC would fit through and then we could do like a bit of a a wave pattern with a white drape say or something you know just yeah. a, a nice color or even find something with a pattern does that sound that would probably work you could yeah because i mean pipes i'm not sure what the piping would cost you'd have to look into well, right, i've, I've look done into some looking yeah, for one thing it's extremely light because it's like a pvc plastic yeah. Yeah. Um, really really easy to disassemble and move um, so that's great for a wedding and, and certainly if you're thinking about doing this for uh, for any kind of uh, event where you need to set up and tear down lightweight and easy to tear down is is very important so with a pvc pipe set up as you know we'd have to set it up to be solid and and not fall over get a couple of drape panels drape panels i have found for about 10 to 18 dollars per panel mm -hmm. and they're about four feet wide each so i thought by the time you do a little bit of this with yeah. the panel you're probably looking at about two feet maybe three so we yeah. probably want two panels yeah. so and the pvc piping can be purchased for about 50 cents per foot mm -hmm. they sell them in 10 foot lengths for five bucks kind of idea yeah so by the time you know we we could probably do that within our budget and then we got to look yeah. at what software Seems like and the hardware. cheaper fruit compared yeah. to some of the like the muslin for example mm -hmm. the mountain everything what do you think we'd love to hear from you in the chat room and also uh on on youtube uh comment at the, below the video uh, also, uh, you can comment on our Twitter channel. It's uh, Category 5 TV. I'll put it right up here for you. Category 5 TV uh, on Twitter. And, of course, you can catch us on Facebook. It's uh, cat5.tv slash Facebook is a quick link to get there and comment. Uh, also, you can get us on Google+, cat5.tv slash G+. Join our community and let us know what you think, what would be the best option, what way would you like to see us go, because on March 12th, we're going to actually be doing the build. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know one person commented here that uh, if it's outdoors, it'll blow over. Now this one will be indoors, but because it's for the reception, not yeah. for the photo shoot, right? And I, I think a lot of photo booth situations are probably going to be indoors anyways. For right. like, if someone wants to build them for themselves, yeah. right? So. And along those lines, you could you could purchase uh, sandbags. Yeah. Uh, even you know a rice bag, a big bag of long grain rice. You can go to a liquidation store that has you know that has bought out rice from a bankrupt restaurant or something and they'll they'll sell them for two bucks for a great big <laughs> bag that weighs 10 kilograms so you slap that thing on the bottom yeah. of it and all of a sudden it's holding your pvc down pretty good uh, but yeah it certainly would could be an issue if it was blowing around mm -hmm. so that's the backdrop then we got to think about the technology how are we actually going to make this work obviously we need a camera we need a way to trigger that camera without having to have the bride standing <laughs> by the thing and showing everybody how to do it and you know you don't want it to be over complicated yeah so when we look at our budget what I'm thinking is that we're gonna do this within har mostly hardware that all of us already have a laptop computer or a desktop computer that we can just plug in with a flat screen monitor you know this kind of thing but mm -hmm. there's a couple things that we will need yeah and what are those things Robbie well I thought about a webcam and I dug through, and I, you know, I've got an assortment of webcams. You probably do too. Um, pardon me. The one that I chose is the Microsoft LifeCam Studio, uh, which is a 1080p webcam because it will do full 1080p. And I just happen to have one. It's USB, so I can plug it in. Mm -hmm. If you don't have one, you can purchase them usually for about fifty dollars or so. They come on sale. Um, when they're not on sale, they might be upwards of about eighty. Uh, watch for sales though. Check online. Go to cat5.tv/lifecam. Cat5.tv/bh. Uh, we'll take you to uh, one of our sponsors and their website. Do a search for LifeCam Studio. Get the 1080p version, not the cinema. That's a 720p version. So with 1080p with a webcam we can actually take some pretty decent quality pictures yeah so that's the webcam portion of it from there of course we're just going to use a computer so I was thinking the laptop that you use or something like that right <laughs> yeah works for you yeah okay so everybody wants to know okay well what software would you use to do something like this so I got into the repositories and I've been looking at some of the options that are available on Linux because first and foremost we want to give Linux a try because it's going to be the cheapest 
it's going to be, you know, we're, we're huge advocates of supporting free software here at Category 5. If we can find something to do it for free or at least with, with freely available software and we can support that, um, then that's the first thing that we want to do. Now, of course, on the 12th, we're going to also be looking at some commercial software. But tonight, we're going to be looking at just, uh, just using free software. So I have Linux installed. This is uh, simply Zorin, uh, or uh, pardon me, yeah. Uh, <laughs> what am I running? I can't even remember now. Zorin OS, yeah. So that's all set. I mean, it's Debian based. It's Ubuntu based. You can be running Ubuntu. You can be running whatever. Mm -hmm. Get into the repositories, and you'll find a program called Cheese Photo Booth. Cheese. Cheese, like. Not <laughs> cheese like, this is cheesy, but cheese like cheese. Okay. You know. <laughs> is that a moment there? Yeah, it makes more sense, right? Someone asked me for way. a tape gun today, and I'm thinking, oh, what now? <laughs> but then I clued in and had a little there you go. gap. So we're going to just install cheese, and I've already done so. And when I, now, when I've got cheese running, I can bring it up here. Uh, it's going to be under sound and video once you've got it installed. And there it is. Okay, so that's looking at us through the Microsoft LifeCam Studio webcam. Mm -hmm. All right. So <clears throat> the next thing that we want to determine is how can we get people to actually be able to point at that take a photo button and mm -hmm. take a photo? Yeah. Kind of impossible. And w do we want to put a full-size QWERTY keyboard in front of them and say, okay, well, I'll push the space bar, do that kind of thing. So... I don't really want to do that. Yeah, you need something that people, because something like that, they might, one person might Somebody's come up gonna and... going to push something wrong. They'll mess everything up and, and the bride is going to be frantic <laughs> and she's going to be like, no, you've broken it. And she's running over and her dress is flailing. And <laughs> you just don't want to see that, you know. So what did we do? We went to usbbutton.com. All right, usbbutton.com. Check this out. For $29, so we're still well within our budget, you can pick up this USB programmable button. And it only does, well, I mean, you can do many, many things, but it's got one toggle. So you program it what you want it to do when I push that button. So you can do a series of things. So you can use this after the fact and use it for whatever you want. Um, have it trigger an application and do something. But for us, what we want to do is we want to just program it to hit the space bar. Mm -hmm. That's all we want it to do. We just want a big button that I can push it, and it hits the space bar. So I tried installing the software on my, uh, on my Linux computer through Wine. It is a Windows-based program in order to program the USB button. Mm -hmm. okay? Unfortunately, it didn't work on Linux. It needs a uh, different version of Mono than, than is available, and .NET didn't work either, and the version of .NET is wrong and Wine for, for what it needs. Mm -hmm. So I just, you know, everybody has access to a Windows computer. Stick it on there, and uh, <clears throat> you'll be good to go. So let's take a look at how that's done. I'm going to bring up the web browser on my Windows computer. Um, oh, and I've, I've actually already installed it. Here we go. So now I can just bring up the software and choose space. I've got the button plugged in. I can choose the colors. This is kind of neat. I can actually set the colors that I want it to be when, the, when I've pressed it. So it's going to go purple when they press it. And when it's not pressed, I want it to be green. So mm -hmm. you saw it's a green button there. So program the button and now it's done. So now, as easy as that, on my Windows system, I've programmed it to be a space bar. Mm -hmm. okay? To get that software, I'm going to go back to my computer here. I had already installed it on, on the Windows system. Just bring up your web browser. Go to <clears throat> usbbutton.com. There you go. You can also buy it here, okay? Fabulous little device. Go to the web store to buy it. You'll see it there. It's 29 bucks. Easy breezy. And it glows green. It glows whatever Ooh. color you want to program it to. Really? Yeah. Uh, and then you download the configuration utility right there. So it's all just on this website. Easy breezy. usbbutton.com. And it works. So now that I've programmed it to be a space bar, theoretically, that yep. should now act as a space bar for, uh, for that software. Because mm -hmm. we're going to be using cheese. <laughs> cheese. Yes, cheese. So nice and easy stuff. Let's bring back up cheese here on my screen. There we go. Okay. 
So watching the chat room, if you have any questions for us, this is Category 5 Technology TV. Tonight, Abigail and myself, we are building a photo booth uh, using some uh, just a couple of little pieces of hardware that we've purchased, but otherwise uh, doing this on a, on a real shoestring budget. We're, we're not really spending a whole lot of money. We're using computers that we have, you know, a computer that we have. We're using a webcam that we have. Um, other nice thing about the, um, the webcam that we chose, I'll just back up a little bit. The, uh, the Microsoft LifeCam Studio, as opposed mm -hmm. to the cinema and many other webcams, has a tripod mount. Okay. okay? So that means you can, you can put it on a tripod and you can see, um, so you may be able to see the, uh, the tripod here. You can certainly see it. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's actually mounted on a tripod right now for us. That's a real bonus. So with our USB button from usbbutton.com, we'll be able to actually trigger that software. So um, I think we should, uh, we should skip into the news. Uh, you can get your questions in in the chat room. It's Category 5 on Freenode, and we're going to come back to our feature tonight, uh, how to build a photo booth on a shoestring budget using Linux, um, right after the news. Uh, so stick around, get your questions into the chat room, uh, or pop us an email live at category5.tv. Ready to take it away? I am. Awesome. Mega Upload Boss Kim.com has set up a new cloud storage and filing file sharing site. Mega, a web based service that lets people upload and store files of any kind, is a sequel to the Mega Upload system that was shut down last January. Police raids on the offices and home of Kim.com led to the closure of Mega Upload. The Mega site went online on Sunday, followed by a lavish launch party held at Mr.com's New Zealand mansion. Mr. Dot Com, who was born Kim Schmitz, has said the new site complies. That's not his new name. His real name. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> the new site complies with the law and said that attempts to take it down would be futile. He said on Saturday, "Quote: This is not some kind of finger to the U.S. government or to Hollywood. Legally, there's just nothing there that." could be used to shut us down. The site is just as legitimate and has the right to exist as Dropbox, BoxNet, and other competitors. And in other news, <laughs> the US operations of Atari have filed for bankruptcy protection. The maker of the groundbreaking video game Pong is seeking to separate from its loss-making French pa parent holding company Atari SA. The US operations of Atari have shifted to their their business from retail games to digital games in recent times and have become a growth engine for Atari SA. The statement said, quote, the Chapter 11 process constitutes the most strategic option for Atari's U.S. operations as they look to preserve their inherent value and unlock revenue potential unrealized while under the control of Atari SA. In, <laughs> in current security news, a federal agency in Canada has lost an unencrypted external hard drive which contained the private information, such as names, social insurance numbers, date of birth, of more than half a million Canadian loan recipients, the very information which can be used in identity, identity theft schemes. A Human Resources and Skills Development Canada employee who was looking for a missing USB key containing the data of more than 5,000 Canadians discovered the external hard drive to also be missing from the office in Gatineau, Quebec. The drive reportedly contained confidential information of 583,000 Canadians. Yikes. The RCMP is calling it one of the largest privacy lapses in Canadian history. The Human Resources Minister, Diane Finley, said, I have directed that departmental officials take a number of immediate actions to ensure that such an unnecessary situation does not happen again. Endpoint Protector from endpointprotector.ca is an endpoint solution which would have prevented this data breach. Strong device use policies and data loss prevention technologies in Endpoint Protector ensure proactive protection and safer working environment. And should an external hard drive be stolen containing the confidential information of 582,000 Canadians, it would be entirely unreadable to the thief. For more information, go to endpointprotector.ca. From our interesting uses of technology file, an architect in Holland has revealed plans to 3D print buildings inspired by the Earth's landscape. The buildings are designed to re re <laughs> resemble, I know English, <laughs> a, a giant Mobius strip, a continuous loop, which only with only one side. Weird. 
No. To say the least. <clears throat> I don't think this Je- falls under English. This is crazy. <laughs> I know. Jeune job. Oh. Regisionaires. <laughs> For the I record. can't speak Dutch. For the record, <laughs> I put that in there on purpose. <laughs> Included the developer's name. <laughs> no offense. Just putting her on the spot. Okay. We'll just say uh, Jen Jap. An individual. <laughs> the individual with apologies. hopes to create the buildings, which he estimates will cost as much as about six and a half million all around the world. Wow. Research? It kind of looks like an Enterprise-esque looking thing to me. But that's that's just me. Yeah. All right. Research has some... Reasons. Do you want me to rewind? <laughs> <laughs> I did so much better last time. Okay. Researchers have uncovered a remote root access vulnerability in the default installation of Linksys routers. The team responsible for the discovery contacted contacted Cisco and shared a detailed vulnerability. <laughs> you can do this. Vulnerability description along with the exploit <laughs> along with the exploit for the vulnerability. Cisco claimed that the vulnerability was already fixed in the latest firmware release, which turned out to be out the beam. <laughs> <laughs> Which turned out to be wrong. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> it turned out to be wrong. Anyway, yeah. Linksys said that uh, this thing was this fixed, and it wasn't. Yeah. Okay, I will continue. The latest <laughs> Linksys firmware, 4.30.14, and all previous versions are still vulnerable, according to defense code. Although Cisco claims that the vulnerability exists only in their Linksys WRT 54G <laughs> router defense code. I am full of the giggles tonight. Started you know that router? It's the WRT 54G. It's it's vulnerable. GL. GL model. <laughs> so defense code started <laughs> investigating their claim. I apologize. And from what they can tell so far, at least one other Linksys model is likely vulnerable. Moreover, during the analysis, they discovered clues that network devices from other manufacturers might also contain the same vulnerability. They are still investigating. Get the full stories at category. Because I thought you were going to interrupt me. No, I was. I was like, I'm not done. Get the full stories at category5.tv slash newsroom. The category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions by our community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of on-air mention, email newsroom at category5.tv. For the Category 5 TV newsroom, I'm Abigail Smith. Abigail Smith, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, How yeah. is it that it's always the most frightening possible story? <laughs> that could ever exist and they laugh to summarize one of it okay the spelling error the, well the spelling so error was me <laughs> but for the record Maybe wrong to summarize i mean we're talking linksys routers the blue ones you know everybody's got at least one of them or yeah. has had one in in their lifetime there are 70 million of these things out there mm-hmm. that have been sold and to think that each of those devices, 70 million devices, all connected to the internet, all connected to the internet all at once, have an exploitable code or an exploitable f- firmware, something about them that would allow a hacker to botnet all of those 70 million devices to create some kind of a super device, something that could attack, something mm-hmm. that could uh, exploit something at a, at a grand scale. I mean, you're looking at the, the combined <laughs> power of all of those devices all all put together and ddosing mm-hmm. um some military system or or whatever else it could could do anything i mean the power that's behind that and to think that cisco says oh yeah we fixed it and no they didn't <laughs> they say that the exploit is still there and possibly actually in some of their other routers and possibly in some other manufacturers routers that is really scary not funny just saying abby it isn't funny. <laughs> Tonight's uh, stories are brought to you in part by Quartery Electric at quarteryelectric.com. Hey, check them out. If you need any electrical work done in uh, in central Ontario, quarteryelectric.com. You can get your free one-month trial of Netflix at cat5.tv slash Netflix. Make sure you check that out. And uh, that is a brilliant service for watching your favorite movies and TV shows and everything. cat5.tv slash Netflix for the free one-month trial. 
This is Category 5 Technology TV. Welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us tonight. Please get into our chat room. It's Category 5 on Freenode, or just visit our website, Category5.tv. All right. You having fun? I am. Yeah? What's going on in the chat room? Trying to keep up? <sighs> yeah, I was They're just looking back, tonight, trying eh? to keep up. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Broadcasting again tonight on YouTube. A very exciting uh, new feature of Category 5 is that we are live on YouTube. So check out our, our YouTube channel, Category 5. Uh, it's Category 5 TV on YouTube. So. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Don't forget, a little bit later on, so a couple more minutes, we're going to be giving away a year free phone service from NetTalk Duo with the NetTalk Duo Wi-Fi. And uh, very awesome. excited about that. Let's pick up where we left off. Let's take a look at what is going to happen when we use cheese in order to... Every time I say cheese, <laughs> she giggles. All right, next I'm having time I'm a giggly bring, night. <laughs> it's just one of those nights, eh? Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, it is water that, uh, that I've given her. <laughs> yes, water. All right. So looking at cheese here, I'm going to just bring up the computer screen. There we are. Okay, so we want to set this up, Abigail, as something more than just something that takes a picture because right now if I click on take a photo there we go so now we've got this photo that it's taken there it is okay so first of all now you know that we've set this up with our uh, Microsoft Life Cam studio com uh, camera which is 1080p compatible so the first thing I want to do is go edit preferences you'll see that it automatically in Linux detects the camera but it automatically has set it to a low resolution 640 by 480, mm -hmm. which is lower than 480p. So if you click on that, click on the arrows, let's see, you'll see that it goes all the way up to 1920 by 1080. I'm probably just going to do the full resolution. Might as well get the best quality that we can. For burst mode, this is where we're going to actually be creating our, uh, our device that's going to work as a, uh, a photo booth. We're going to set the number of photos. I would think that four is probably good, eh, Abigail? Yeah. And the delay between each photo we're going to set to one second. So now, if I take a picture, <laughs> we get something that is much higher resolution. So you compare, it looks pretty, pretty good. Pretty attractive. Yeah, pretty great. Thanks, Abigail. These are going up on your bio. All right, so now, watch this. Here's what we need to do with cheese. We're going to go cheese countdown, important. Cheese flash. <laughs> Abigail. Okay. <laughs> this is for your wedding. I Come know. on, take take things seriously for I know. once. <laughs> okay, cheese flash. What the <laughs> Ow. <laughs> oh, I'm burning up. What are you finding funny? It's the cheese? Oh, I guess cheese? so. You're just, you're just talking so seriously. And not the cheese. <laughs> Click on the cheese. Yeah. yeah. The flash feature is pretty cool, Abigail. Pretty it is. cool indeed. <laughs> what the flash does, because you've got to imagine we're going to put a, an LCD monitor in front of them, right? Mm -hmm. The flash feature is just a fake flash. It basically just makes the monitor turn white for just a split second. All right? So that's a cool feature for our photo booth. We're going to have that enabled. Okay. Now, next step, Abigail. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to click on cheese, <laughs> scroll oh. down, and switch to burst mode. All right? Burst. That's basically going to give us that. It's going to take four photos in one second intervals. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to switch to full screen mode. And that was one second enough time for them to switch their poses. One second. Uh, let's give it a try, shall we? And we'll make that decision. It's really up to you. So we'll click on cheese again. And I'm going to scroll down. And I'm going to go full screen mode. Now that is what it looks like. Okay? Mm -hmm. So remember, we've got this USB button, button from usbbutton.com. Button. We've set it to be a space bar. So if I put this here and I touch it, it's going to turn purple. See that? Like I programmed. And let's see what happens if it works as it is. I've clicked. There we go. Okay. Smile. Okay, oh, now it's counting down again. Delayed. Three, two, one. See? It's kind of like a photo booth. Is 
So how'd that feel with one second in between? It's a very delayed second. It felt good. Like it, it felt, it felt like, like enough it, time. It felt like enough time. So let's see what what we got out of that. So there we go. Photo number one. Photo number two. We didn't really do much different. Photo number three, and photo number four. Just like that. <laughs> so now you can take those photos, and you know you can take those home after the wedding and we can crop and set yeah. them up however however you like to do all right so again you know it's as simple as that we're going to go full screen mode and now we've got that button how brilliant is that we've basically that easily have created our first little photo booth pretend we've got a nice backdrop and everything and we're able to to do that push the button counts down you can see on your screen there oh, i thought i was going to take a picture <laughs> it did it oh. did take a picture in one second intervals okay which you can change. You can set that to five seconds if you want. But I think the one second is pretty good. And it keeps the thing flowing, right? For a second, I thought it was going to stop taking pictures. I'm like, I was going to stand here like this. <laughs> <laughs> or sit. <clears throat> there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is a photo booth created entirely with Linux and just a few little add-ons. And uh, there you go. Cheese photo booth is available in your repositories on any uh, distribution of Linux. So check that out. Someone, uh, Troy74, suggested you could put a uh, photo printer on site, too. Sure so some could. people might be interested yeah, That's something in that we're actually well. going to be looking at in part two of this, uh, this feature. That uh, is actually going to be going forth on March 12th. Abigail's going to be back with us that day, and we're going to be actually building the backdrop based on your suggestions, which we're looking for on Twitter. Uh, you can tweet us at Category5TV. Also, we're looking for your suggestions through YouTube. Uh, just comment below this video for episode number two, uh, 279. Uh, you can uh, comment there. Um, you can comment on our Facebook channel, cat5.tv slash Facebook, or on our Google Plus um, community, which is cat5.tv slash G+. So we give you lots of ways. And, of course, if you're not a part of any of those social media networks, you can also email us live at category5.tv. We'd love to receive your feedback. We're going to be putting that all together on the 12th. Awesome. Cool. What do you think so far? I mean, that. how does like that feel as far as... Oh, I think it works out really well and gives people time to change. And mm -hmm. I mean, it. it's very clear that they've t it's taken a picture, right? So that yeah, they know. Yeah. And you programmed it to my wedding colors. Did I? Well, Green that purple. was strategic. That worked out You're supposed really, to be like, really well. Abby, of course I, I care. Did. Obviously, I'm I so know sensitive. these things. <laughs> It's just fluke, wasn't it? <laughs> it really was. I just thought green for go and purple for, ah, she's a girl. She probably likes it. <laughs> well, it's spot on then. <laughs> it sounds wrong, but, you know, I know her well enough that I can poke fun. Yeah. All right. There we have it. So, dokey. Thanks, folks. Uh, I saw some, some viewer questions that came in. We should uh, yes. touch on those while we still have a, a couple minutes' time. And then we're going to be giving away that year of NetTalk uh, yes. telephone service with NetTalk 2.0 Wi-Fi. Uh, so if you got your ballot in, there it is. So shake, shake, stick shake. around. What do you got for me? I have a comment from Costas358. Hey, yeah. In the past, I had contacted you asking about installing Ubuntu on a Mac Mini. Eventually, I managed to install Kubuntu. Yeah. 12.10. It works really well. Nice. Faster even than the native uh, OS. OS, OS. Uh, operating system, yeah. Short <clears throat> forms, I know. They're killer. <laughs> you know, it is. Even supports dual monitor, although I get no sound via HDMI. Hmm. Thanks, and keep up the good work. Yeah, thanks for the update. Nice to hear that you got that working on your Mac Mini. That's very cool. Kubuntu. It's the KDE Ubuntu. version of Ubuntu. Kubuntu. Kubuntu. It's like <laughs> Ubuntu with a K at the beginning. There you go. What else you got for All me? All right. So and the next question from 7061. Oh, Toby. Hey, buddy. Okay. I completely forgot <laughs> to send you a picture of what Unity 2D dash looks like running in other desktop environments. Here's Unity 2D running in XFCE with... AWN and best of all the HUD nice. works perfectly. I been <laughs> experimenting a bit. And I think the HUD will only work if you have all the modules for the Ubuntu desktop installed. This is not the full on Unity shell, just the 2D dock. What do you think? Oh, and Unity 2D is still in the repository in Ubuntu Quantal Great. Quetzal. <laughs> so you can still do this. <laughs> Why do they do this to you? Eh? <laughs> it's a Quantal Quetzal. That's really great, though. I mean, that looks good. And uh, to be on Unity 2D as opposed to 3D is uh, is 
pretty cool as long as it will continue working for you. I, I'm I'm feeling more and more. I mean, now that finally we've got the Ubuntu mobile phones coming out, I'm starting to see how Unity works with everything and how it's designed to to really make it so that my my devices all play the same really so I'm, I'm starting to see that so so unity is not looking as as ugly to me as it did when it first came out so um so i'm considering it folks considering, considering. it considering i like their background i do yeah that looks really nice thanks toby right, so the next question i've got an event who's this from scott it's from hey, scott, scott. I've got an event coming up that we're planning on recording and streaming. Worst case, I'll grab an audio feed from the board at the venue and use my Logitech C920 and shoot it to a Google Hangout via Wirecast. Okay. I'm wondering if I can get any better video of the stage since I'll likely be a bit of a dis- at a bit of a distance. So, so just so- just before it looks like a long email. So a C920 is the Logitech uh, monitor top webcam. Okay. So talking about using one of those and streaming it to Wirecast. All right. Anytime we get stuck on anything, I'll, I'll okay. just kind of fill in. So yep. C- continue, please. So far, the ideas I've come up with have not been successful. Okay. I'd like to either find a USB webcam that has a significant optical zoom or find a way mm. to convert my wedding... <laughs> Got my wedding on my mind. Yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> or find a way to convert my video cam's HMDI out into a USB feed. Any thoughts? HDMI out. Uh, now, as far okay, so we need to understand the difference between HDMI and USB because USB is a digital connection that provides you know a device to your computer. HDMI, however, is a digital video output. So if you have a desktop computer, um, you could get what's called a Blackmagic Intensity Pro PCI Express capture card, and a, an Intensity Pro is the opposite of a video card. It's a it's a video capture card. But what's neat about it is that it has inputs for 1080p HDMI. So when you've got that camera that has an HDMI output, you're going to get the absolute best digital signal from that camera uh, without going without downscaling it. You're going to get the best quality using a Blackmagic Intensity Pro. Uh, you can get those through our sponsor, cat5.tv slash bh. Again, do a search for uh, Blackmagic Intensity Pro. And that will give you the PCI Express, for, Express version. There's also a Thunderbolt version. There's also a USB 3.0 version as well. If you have a camera that you've converted from HDMI to USB or it happens to have a USB output, the problem is, is USB 2.0 is 480 megabits a second. So it has to downscale a stream that's normally you know huge and create something that's really low quality in order to stream through USB because it's not actually a video Codec, UDAC, uh, USB is not a video transfer mechanism. It is a data transfer mechanism. So, um, so that's not the best way to do it. You're not going to get the best quality. That said, I mean, lots of webcams these days have built-in compressors um, that will compress the stream and then send it over USB. Like our, we were looking at the Microsoft Life Cam cine- uh, s- Studio tonight. It compresses the video and sends it 1080p, and it's great. Um, but the webcams you're going to get very very poor frame rate in a live setting because you have to have absolutely perfect lighting lighting is absolutely key with with a a webcam plain and simple Um, and what happens is if the lighting isn't perfect the webcam enhances the lighting which brings down the frame rate so you end up getting like seven frames a second so your video starts to look choppy so webcams are not ideal and you're not going to find one that has sufficient uh, optical zoom um, plain and simple. I would look at uh, like a consumer camera. Um, we use a Canon Vixia, uh, just like an RF100 or something like that, which are, you know, they're obsolete now, but it's 1080p and it gets the job done. We use it at full wide, like we're looking at the full angle so that when I zoom out, that's, that's it zoomed out all the way. Now, what you can do, though, is it has like 20 times optical zoom. And optical zoom means you're zooming in and not losing any quality because it's part of the optics. Mm-hmm. It's not digital. So it's great in a venue where you're, you're having to zoom in on a stage and, again, has HDMI output. So we're able to get that at 1080p resolution, and it's lossless. So it's, it's quite good quality. It's, it's a good way to go. So I hope – does that does that sound like it answers your question well, a little bit? Well, he has um – Oh, please there's proceed if there's it. more yes, to it. Yes, yeah. there's some more. Okay. Another option I'm not crazy about is to place a couple laptops around the room with their own C920s attached. Mm, but lag, my friend. 
Yeah. Yeah, so, but put them where they will get a good shot without Zoom. Then I can add them all to the Google Hangout and select the machine I want as a source. Oh, This is a Hangouts? bit of a kludge, but I'm in a bind. Hmm. <laughs> he says, I even tried using Android phones as remote IP cameras, which seemed pretty cool at first, but I couldn't get them into Wirecast and audio latency with, it was go. horrific. Yeah. So Chat room. Yeah. What did you find? If you're watching on YouTube, as we were laughing before the show, what was it that we found about Hangouts? We're talking away, and what happened? It just... <laughs> it was like I, I froze. <laughs> no, it was it was a bad delay. Yeah, it was a delay. We were hearing Big delay. It sounded like we were hearing it twice. Yeah. So just, for us, it was hilarious. For you in your live setting, not usable, right? Yeah. For what you're looking to do with placing cameras all over the place, you're looking at more like an IP camera uh, configuration, which can get pretty pricey. You can find some that are, you know, not too bad a quality that aren't too overly expensive. But they're going to go through Ethernet, and then you can stream to Wirecast again. Um, HDMI. You've got an H. Let's say you go with that consumer camera idea because we're. I'm thinking that you're looking for something that's decently priced. That's the impression that I get. We're looking to to build this thing without being too expensive. If you've got a couple of consumer cameras and a couple of HDMI extenders, like HDMI over Ethernet or something like that, there that adds to the cost, but that lets you get, you know, 500 feet of HDMI cable, and it's a cheap cable, you know, if, what's Cat5 cable these days, like 40 cents a foot or something, I don't know. Uh, so it's cheap cable to run. You can't get an HDMI cable that's that long because it's, it, it, you, you get beyond 10 feet and you're going to lose signal because it's a digital... Uh, just the way the signal is, you'll, you won't get any, any video out of it. So I would say a single camera with good optical zoom is a good start. HDMI straight to your computer. That's going to give you the best quality. And if you need to position cameras all over, do the same thing. HDMI is uh, probably the best way to go. Or HDMI over Wi-Fi be another way. It's going to be compressed, though. You're going to lose quality. Um, and and the the disadvantage to doing like the optical zoom thing, I, I thought about you know church scenarios where they've got a camera at the back with the board, and they've zoomed it way into the stage, lighting's fine and everything like that. But what's the truth about when you've zoomed in that far? Is that the very subtlest movement? You know somebody walking by and um, you know their footsteps just moving the floor even slightly because you're zoomed way in, it's going to give you a real do 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 like mm -hmm. movement on the screen. You can use uh, optical stabilization if your camera has a stabilizer built in. That can help with that. But when you're zoomed in like that, you're going to still get some movement. Um, so yeah. that in mind. Let me know uh, if you could pop me an email again, uh, because your email is pretty uh, verbose as far as what you're hoping for. And I hope I've been of some assistance for you tonight. I do believe Wirecast is the way to go. Um, it's cat5.tv slash Wirecast if you want to give it a free try. And, uh, and see how it works for you. Uh, you can actually set up as many cameras as you want and, uh, and give it a try. And then if you want to buy it, you can. Um, but I, I'd like to know more about what you want to do and, and pop me an email and, and maybe I can be of more help. Uh, so send me, send me a follow-up if you could. Thank you very much for the email. All right, so we have uh, one more person um, right. from Myhail or Mihail. 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 Oh, yeah. They have a question for Debian 6 on how mm -hmm. to change the system language. Okay. Oh, that's... All right. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like there was more. Okay, go well, to... Well, no, there's, there's a couple other questions as well. Um, okay, well, let's, let's just get you there. wiki.debian.org slash change language with a capital C, capital L. I'm going to take you right there because it tells you a little bit about how to do it. Uh, you're going to need to export what language you want to use and then reconfigure your locale settings as well. Really, really simple. Um, you, you need to know your locale. Um, you know, like here it's using Spanish, which is ES underscore ES. Um, I'm like EN underscore CA or EN underscore US if we want to use US English, for example. Um, you should be able to find everything that you need there. Um, so that's wiki.debian.org slash change language with a capital C and capital L. Okay. And then uh, for his second or their second question is, mm -hmm. is there a, an a, antivirus program put on? Is there one like a need for an antivirus on Debian? 
I glanced over at your screen. I'll be honest. Okay. <laughs> Second question is, is there a need for antivirus on Debian? Um, it depends on your, your perspective, I think, because viruses can spread through a Linux system. You can get emails that have viruses, and then you forward those emails on, and then all of a sudden your Windows-using friends are infected with that virus. Um, so it's, it's helpful to protect them to have that antivirus, but also there are new, new problems that are things like phishing scams, which, you know, you think that you're safe on Linux or safe on Mac OS because you can't catch a virus in the traditional sense of, you know, Microsoft Windows where you just, oops, I actually touched a JPEG and all of a sudden my computer's <laughs> destroyed. Um, but there are phishing scams which trick you into doing things that you don't want to do. And so an antivirus that protects you against phishing scams can help against that as well. Um, so you can look at Clam AV. It's free. It's in the repositories. Give it a try. Uh, it's a pretty common one that uh, that we use on servers and things like that. And of course, uh, you can look at some com commercial applications as well. I know ESET has uh, a file system protection for Linux. Tends to be more geared towards servers, though. The workstations, I would just you know you can you can install it absolutely. Uh, but is it necessary? It's 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 hard to say. It's really your call. So finally, the last question is, do you think Apple restricts people with their closed system? Uh, that's, uh, that's an odd question, I think. Uh, does it, do they restrict uh, just as much as Windows does? Because um, it is a closed source system. It's not like Linux where you can edit the source if you really want to, but how many people really do edit the source? It's hard to say. I think it's more of a, it's a proprietary hardware. So you're restricted to buying proprietary hardware, stuff that is you know, Mac supported, and that's where it gets you because it's a different scenario. They're, they're building appliances versus, you know, Windows or Linux is, is more like it's a personal computer. You can add things to it and remove things from it, and it doesn't have to be a certain brand or anything like that. It could be anything that's compatible with your computer, and mm -hmm. it's good to go. Mm -hmm. um, but no more than the next guy, I don't think. So okay. thanks for your questions. I have... A NetTalk Duo Wi-Fi to give away. Look at this. Okay, this is a little device. Simple, simple, simple. I'm going to give you the quick rundown uh, because this is amazing. I mean, look at this thing. It's just a little tiny thing that replaces your phone company. I'm going to give you this. I'm going to give it to you with a year of service. That includes free, unlimited long distance to Canada, the U.S. People can call you incoming. Uh, like you get a local phone number, and to them it's just like co calling anyone else. Um, there's no, you know, it, you're dialing landlines. I can call anywhere in Canada and the U.S. for free. And here in Canada, in the U.S., you can actually port your phone number. So that what that means is if you've already got a phone line with an existing provider, you can say, you know what? I've, I, I can install this. I can try it for a couple of weeks and say, you know what, this is really good. I don't want to pay for a phone bill anymore. I'm going to switch to this. You can actually change your phone service over to this, and you'll keep your phone number so you don't lose your home phone. All right, like the number will now mm -hmm. ring on this. So now you take this little device, you unplug it, you stick it in your pocket or your laptop bag, and you take it with you to Europe. You plug it in at the hotel and you, someone dials your home phone number here in Canada, and it rings there in Europe, and it is not a long-distance call. Absolutely free. You plug this in your hotel room in wherever. Let's, mm -hmm. well, you, I'm using Europe as the example. Let's say I head over to Austria because we've got some great friends in Austria. And I plug this in and I call my work number here in Barrie and I say, you know, how are things going? Any, you guys need to send me anything? It's a local call for me. They can call me back and it's a local call because it's a Barrie phone number. Well, I guess because it, well, how it do you uses like that? the Wi-Fi too, right? Is that why it... It Works uses like internet to make the calls, but yeah. you, you're none the wiser. It's just a phone service. Yeah. Now you install the app on your iPhone, your Android device, and you bring up the app and you dial a phone number and are calling using Wi-Fi. And you're no longer using your minutes to make that call. This is all part of the NetTalk Duo experience, and it's uh, you know just going to blow your mind, and you're going to want to fire your phone company <laughs> right away. You get a full year of service, absolutely free. You get the device. You get all that, unlimited long distance. I'm going to give you the honors. Now, we've got a 1 in 72 chance of... Give it a good stir and mix it up. 1 in 72 chance of winning tonight. Thank you, everybody, for sending in your ballot. Drum roll. We don't have a drum roll. Drum roll. <laughs> the number. Oh. 
There's two of them in that one. Oh, we can't do that. I only have one to give away. Okay. Whoop. Ready? Whoop, whoop, whoop. Dun, dun, dun. Eight, six, five, seven, five, nine. Is that it? Yep. <laughs> Any hits enter? Eight, six, five, seven, five, nine is G Siegel. Congratulations, G Siegel. You are the proud owner of a NetTalk Duo Wi Fi. Check it out, cat5.tv slash phone for all the details. Uh, even if you didn't win tonight, I mean, G Siegel is like, woohoo, and he's there, and he's, he's Googling, and he's uh, thrilled, I guarantee you. But uh, make sure you at home go over to cat5.tv slash phone to find out more information about the NetTalk Duo Wi-Fi. You can pick one up there. If you want to save money on your home phone bill, uh, you can fire your phone company now with NetTalk Duo Wi-Fi. So check that out, cat5.tv slash phone. And that is all the time that we have for tonight. Wow, that Flies went fast. By, I know. Yeah. All the giggles. Covered a lot. I know. That was really distracting, Abigail. I, I'm excited about all the stuff that we're doing here at the show. I'm excited about our, our new USB button from usbbutton.com and how that's going to make our uh, photo booth work so Amazing. much easier. It's going to look really, really cool once everything is said and done. So uh, make sure you are here on March 12th. Abigail will be here. And, I'll be uh, back. We'll be continuing the series. So. All right. Thanks, everybody. Abigail, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Have a good night. See you next Have week. Have a good night. <laughs> Bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed the show. Category 5 TV broadcasts live from Barrie, Ontario, Canada every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. If you're watching this on demand or through cable TV, check out the local showtimes in your area at Category5.tv and find out when you can watch live and interact in the community chat room. Category 5 is a production of Prodigy Digital Solutions and is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 2.5 Canada. We'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in.